Rene Kogelbauer is a passionate and highly respected teacher. He's taught at schools and universities all over Europe, in England, Germany, Austria, Russia, Hungary and Slovakia. Today he's a university lecturer and education academic at Newcastle University, which is where we are now. As a champion of language learning in the UK, he works closely with key language bodies around the country and abroad. René was born in Austria in 1977, attended Vienna and Kiel universities, studied education and languages, and moved to England in 1999. So he's ideally placed to contrast and evaluate education systems in Britain and Germany, and how they compare with the rest of Europe. René, in the decade and a half since you've lived in the UK, how would you say education has changed? I think there have been a lot of changes, um, but one of the key changes, I think, is um, the kind of variety of school, types of schools that ha have now um, been established, such as free schools, academies, the academy movement, and various different academy movements in, uh, from different uh, governments. Um, mm -hmm. More and more kind of disparate system in the sense of there's a Welsh system and there's an English system. Let's look at the English education system. What's good? What's bad? I think the one element that I'm co really concerned is the amount of change and also the question of are we giving ourselves enough time to actually embed uh, the changes in our system? Uh, is it enough to basically say, <clears throat> if we bring in an initiative, uh, we give ourselves a year's time at the end of the year, we'll basically take it off and move on to the next initiative. Um, we know from research that um, we would say an initiative is embedded uh, in a system if it has been developed over seven years. So therefore, sometimes the question is, if a government makes a change, have they actually got enough time to embed it? Um, but there are certain schools that have not got this flexibility because they are on the much more scrutiny than other schools. So outstanding schools will be uh, less under scrutiny than possibly schools that have to improve. And I think um, that is, was for me something completely new, that schools are judged and that are ranked according to their performance. Um, I couldn't tell you um, in the last 45 years in Austria or Germany any kind of school ranking or how good a school is. Um, and I think that's completely different um, approach to e education, therefore, because there's also the, coming in the parental choice. We were talking about what's good and bad about the mm. English education system. Have you got any more points? I like think I'd there? like to raise for me a few positive points. And that for me, it's the pastoral system. The pastoral system? Yes. Um, it's basically that you have lots of schools, all schools have got form tutors, head of years, so there's an additional structure that um, German and Austrian schools don't have. The time every morning, the joint assemblies with the year group, um, and this kind of feeling of being part of um, a group and be supported and having some support also in the school, well, um, I think is a very positive um, aspect of the English system. So, any other positive things, or is there just one? <laughs> no, 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 there are other positive things. I've, I'm, I'm always asked uh, by uh, people when they uh, travel in, in German-speaking countries, what would you introduce if you came back? And I think the one element that immediately would be introducing would be uh, drama as a subject. Theatre? Yeah? Drama? Yes. I think, I think <clears throat> drama gives the students an additional skill um, for not just to cope and go through the education system um, and through schooling in terms of presentation skills, in terms of thinking about how they come across when they uh, talk to people, um, but also in terms of their future job opportunities. I think they will be uh, better at interviews, they will be thinking much more strategically, um, how they're going to be presenting themselves in different situations. So I think that's uh, an element that I'd like to see um, German and Austrian schools to adopt 
into their kind of um, key curriculum. There seem to have been a lot of complaints about um, learning by rote, for example. I mean, I mean too much chalk and talk. Um, is that what you see? I think what we need to be slightly careful when we're talking about pen and paper and all these elements. I think over the last 10 years, I think schools have put enormous amount of money towards um, technology. And I completely um, endorse that. And I think if we compare it to some German and Austrian schools, they always, when they come over, are quite jealous about how many um, projectors, how many whiteboards we've got in classrooms. But the question is, for me, have we actually developed a pedagogy around how we're going to be uh, working with these um, new technological devices? I've recently been in, in, in invited by a head teacher who was really proud of um, having given all his classes iPads um, and wanted to show off his innovation. But the only thing that happened was that all the resources his pupils would normally have as textbooks or handouts were basically uploaded on their iPads. Is that what the technology device should be for? Or could we actually use it for much more creative stuff? You have free schools, academies here, private schools. Is this good for education in this country? I mean, one, one argument could be having all these new type of schools emerging, that therefore there's much more parental choice. But um, I, I do agree with you in, in terms of the kind of uh, question of if there's parental choice, how much choice also have head teachers got in the new type of schools of actually taking certain type of students and not taking certain type of students. We had at the beginning of the academy um, movement there were a number of stories where head teachers very quickly got rid of some um, badly behaved students. And the question is, where will they be ending up in the system? Um, and um, we do have still a high proportion of children who are not, in particular after 14, and, and, um, who are not in education training. And I think when we look to Germany, when we look to Austria, these are the key elements where Austria and Germany have really shown a stability and therefore have also ensured that those students that might not be as academic have a set up for a secure and prosperous future. Education is always a political football. Do you think there's actually too much political interference? Yes. I think um, one of the reasons I moved from Austria at the beginning was because there's quite a lot of political involvement in Austria in terms of, um, I'll just give you one example. Um, if, you are, if you want to be appointed as a head teacher, you have to be linked to a political party. Yeah? Um, otherwise, you won't have a chance to become a head teacher. Um, and I think this party political influence is, from my perspective, dangerous and uh, not helpful. I'm not saying there shouldn't be very clear visionary ideas about education and politics, but I've, I see it much more as a kind of societal challenge. Um, and I would, I personally think it's not a surprise that um, Finland has been um, seen in the last five years as one of the leading systems in Europe. Because the approach to school improvement and school system improvement um, considerably differently. When they realised the crisis in the 1960s, they said, OK, we need to tackle that. But not within one government. We need to see it as a societal challenge. And they've now, 40, 45 years later, become the top system uh, within Europe. Sometimes we are working partly because of this culture of inspecting schools, failing schools, wanting them to improve within a year. What is happening is a lot of quick fixes. And the big question is how sustainable are these quick fixes. 
If you think back to the classrooms that you've mm. taught in, yeah. um, you, you know, there you are walking into a mm. classroom. What is a good English classroom? What makes this classroom special for you? I think there's a fundamental difference between the, the relationship of teachers in German-speaking countries and in England. Um, and I think it has to do with the fact that the German and Austrian teachers are giving the end grade. They decide through the final year grade whether a child is moving on or having to repeat a year. In the English system, it, I've always found that it's kind of somehow this relationship of we are working together to aim to get you through this exam. Is it, would you call an English classroom a relatively happy place? Jolly? English schools do work on a very kind of strict disciplinary model. Um, so things like you would find concepts such as um, three warnings, then a conduct card, which leads to um, possibly um, a letter to the parents or a phone call to the parents or um, detentions, um, even to the elements of daily exclusions, fixed terms exclusions or permanent exclusions. Something uh, that I was completely surprised by because it doesn't exist in the German or Austrian system. How have you been accepted by the English system as a foreigner? Um, I think I've been accepted, I've been welcomed in all the schools I've worked at. I've been accepted and also not ignored when it came to promotions. Yeah, so I think um, that's done very well actually. <laughs> yeah. You've been promoted a lot. Um, but I think that is credit to the, this system. Language learning. Okay. Now this is an area very close to your heart, mm. very close to my yes. heart. Language learning um, was no longer compulsory after the year 2003-2004 in this country. Should there be compulsory language learning? And how are we recovering from this deficit? I'm not sure that we are really recovering. And there are a number of reasons for that. I think uh, one of the reasons why we might struggle for some years is because now these years of the student cohorts that were non, not made to do a language at GCSE level are coming through to universities. So therefore the numbers at the university in the universities that um, study languages are reduced. Therefore if we've got less language graduates coming out then we're going to have less potential teachers in the future. So the detrimental effects Fact of is, that is now going to happen. Are, 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 are happening now? They, they are happening now. Um, and I think we also, that also is going to threaten, I think, one of the other initiatives the new government is trying to bring in, and that is making languages compulsory from 2014 in um, primary schools. Because if we haven't got primary teachers coming through with a language skills, how will they be able to teach their children? Is there enough international exchange between teachers and schools and are we learning enough from each other? There have been initiatives in over the last 10 years where it has been made quite difficult for, in, in certain schools to actually get out and um, for teachers to organise trips abroad. And I think that is something we need to be really, really thinking very carefully about. Because if we really want our students and our, our learners in Britain to be European citizens, global citizens, we need to ensure that they get the experience of going abroad. In my own experience, I mean, we, uh, the school I've been working at, um, the German exchange has been running for over 35 years now and it's still going with the same school and the partnership and the exchange between teachers about their pedagogy, their um, approach to learning is as vital as the kind of experience that learners have while they're in Germany or over here.
Brené, you've lived and worked here for quite a few years now. Do you think you're going to stay or will you go back? There have been once or twice in my career uh, moments where I was thinking of moving back. Um, but um, I think the decision has been made that I will be staying. And why? In the last few years, I've focused much more on the leadership element and also leadership for learning. And I think uh, one of the very interesting elements is, is, is that England has developed over the years a system to actually train middle leaders, senior leaders, head teachers, uh, which I think is one of the kind of strongest element uh, within Europe in terms of the quality of training uh, head teachers. Um, and for me, the exciting element now is, we've done that over 10, 15 years, what is the impact? And for me personally, I want to see what impact is not just on the school, but also in the classroom and the learning. What is happening in the English classroom uh, because of head teachers' decisions? For the moment, they're definitely going to stay. René Kogobar, thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much.